You know, in the, in the book of John, it tells us that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus also said that, I am he who was, who is, and who is to come. In this arena of way, truth, and life, it's almost like it's a three-dimensional arena. Where Jesus even said himself, I am he who was, who is, and who is to come. And there's a dimension that God is desiring to walk, have his children walk into. And it's an arena where you can see things to come. Oh, I give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Where the Holy Spirit is telling you things to come where there's such a preparation. You know, every day we're shedding more and more of ourself. Our flesh is being crucified daily. That's why Jesus said, pick up your cross, but first deny yourself, then follow me. You know, that in, within us, our spirit is groaning to be more clothed with God's glory. Yes. To be clothed with His glory. Because that's where we belong. We desire, you know, we're fighting for the presence of God and we don't even realize it. And the world is being taken out by idols and false gods and idol worship and lusts and entanglements and affairs of the world. Greed, power for money. All kinds of other things. Self-promotion, self-exaltation, pride. It brings a temporary fulfillment. But there's a fulfillment where you and I can walk in, in this third dimension where God is pouring out new wine. It's happening. It's coming. And it's already started, but it's going to increase. It's going to increase. But you and I have a responsibility, and that is to deny ourselves constantly in that area. Constantly. You know, one of the things that we need to begin to do more often is a, the Bible says, check yourself. Judge yourself. What's your motive? What's your desire? Why are you doing what you're doing? Is what you're doing to expand the kingdom of God and bring glory to His name or is what you're doing to expand your own empire? Amen. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Are you trying to build yourself a life or are you allowing God to build your life? These are areas where the goat and the sheep are being separated. And I shared this a long time ago and it's manifesting greatly. I have talked with individuals who are involved in tremendous big ministries where things even at the top are being exposed. God is exposing the goat. And His hope is that He will grant them repentance so that they become sheep. Where do you stand before God in every decision you make? Is everything that you, a decision that you make pleasing God? Or is your heart towards God when every decision you make? See, the Lord says, if you do this, I'll do that. <laughs> God's new wine that is a, has been pouring out has just been trickling, but I'm telling you it's going to be pouring out in a great way. In a great way and money weighed, and you're going to need to have this new wine to make it through for what is coming. Is everybody with me? Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Turn to Hosea chapter 6. All oh, glory. Hosea chapter 6. I give you praise. Lord, grant us revelation, please. Oh, Master. Hallelujah. The name of the teaching is called New Wine. New Wine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hosea chapter 6, starting at verse 1 through 3. Would you read it with me, please? Come, let us return to the Lord. Hello, you know what he's saying? He's saying, come on. Come on, return to me. Come on, no matter what you've gone through, where you've been, what you've touched, what you've said, what you know you shouldn't have done and you've done, forget it, repent, and turn to me. T return to me. For he has torn, but he will what? He will heal us. He has stricken, but he will what? Bind us up. After two days, He will what? Revive us. Refresh us. 
on the third day he will what? Raise us up that we may what? Live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the truth of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will what? He will come to us like the rain. That's new wine. Like the latter and former rain to the earth. There's a new wine that you're going to begin to drink. There's a new point out of God's presence. You can't figure it out. That's all you can do is drink. It's happening even right now. Even in this room tonight, there's something happening. You know, you're in this room tonight because God drew you, right? That's because He's trying to impart something. He's trying to expose you to you. <laughs> Before you get exposed to everybody else. Because at the moment you said, Lord, not my will, but your will. He said, okay, now your life is mine and it's no longer yours. Now give me it. And quit trying to build your life because if you build your life, I'm going to expose your flesh. Nothing can sustain the presence of the Lord in flesh. Only God's presence. Only God's presence in your life. Does everybody understand that? Only His presence in your life can sustain His presence. <laughs> and it's done by the blood. You know, there are many people who are still out there fornicating, claiming to be believers. There's many people out there still lying and cheating and doing all kinds of stuff, claiming to be believers. And you know what? They're going to miss that wine. But they're going to drink another wine. Oh, hallelujah. He said, listen, I'll, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Now, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Praise you, Master. Uh, I'm sorry, not Second Timothy. Did I say Second Timothy? Second Peter. Second Timothy works too, huh? Maybe it is Second Timothy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's do it. Glory to God. Second Peter, I'm sorry. Chapter three. Is everybody there? Verse 8. Would you all read it with me? But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. That's a prophetic mess, uh, time sequence. From the time that Adam and the time of Jesus is 4,000 years. From that period of time, when the Spirit of God was poured out, that is known as the rain or the pouring out of His Holy Spirit. That's when the church began. From that period to right now, it's an additional over 2,000 years. The Bible says that after two days, I will revive you, and on the third day, I will basically take you home. Does everybody understand that? We are right now in the generation that will be taken home. We are that generation. If you'll turn to the book of Matthew. And I believe it's in... Uh, oh, hallelujah. Matthew. 
Matthew 20 something. I think it's 26 or 27. Uh, go to Matthew 27. In verse 50, this is when Jesus was on the cross and he was dying and he died right here. Matthew 27 and verse 50, would you read it with me? Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now remember something. This is where God was saying, okay, I forgive man. I am now making a way, an exit for you. Man is now able to come to heaven. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. Now check this out. And the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Hello. They were revived, weren't they? They were there. They were, they were brought from those, those tombs that were opened up, splits, uh, rocks were split, and so forth. Tombs were opened up, and all of a sudden, these bodies were shown all over. And 53... And says, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, which would have been after the third day, they went into this holy city and appeared to many. Hallelujah. That's what's happening right now with me and you. We are in the revived stage. The next stage that's going to manifest is that we are going to be taken home. Is everybody with me? But before we, be, we are taken home, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be happening. And they already are. <laughs> Go to Mark 13. Oh, Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Oh, to God be the glory. What did I say to go? Mark 13? Yeah. Okay. Mark 13 and verse... And verse 3. Let's start there. Read it with me. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John... And Andrew answered him privately, Tell us when all these things will be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled. And Jesus answered, in the, saying to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. You know, there are many people who are claiming to be the Messiah even now in different religions and all kinds of... It's all over the place. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. Are there rumors and wars going on? Big time. We're in one right now, aren't we? We're in the area where Satan's throne is at, Iraq. And that whole area is known as Babylon. We have actually crossed over on Satan's throne room territory and he doesn't like it you know why because the army of God is advancing we are to take the land now we have outposts there of the kingdom of God the gospel is being preached TV stations are being set up where we're able to attack the Arab world that is Satan's throne room what holds the money oil isn't that Satan's control Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But the end is not yet. In verse 8, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
and there will be what? Earthquakes in various places. Have we had any earthquakes lately? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Do you know that 40,000 people were just killed because of the largest earthquake ever known? Amen. What did it hit? Hindu and Buddha countries. We're close. 40,000 people. Can you imagine a wave about 30 feet tall coming at you at 500 miles an hour? I'd say it'd do some damage. It's happened. It's happening. You cannot ignore the signs. And there will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. I'm telling you, we've been in it and we're almost out of it. But watch out for yourselves for they will deliver you up to councils and you will be beaten in synagogues. I'm telling you, our, the, the, the Christian believers are being persecuted tremendously even in this country. This country has never been so divided than it has been right now. Never. Because it used to be a common thing of Christianity. It used to be a common thing to have prayer in school. It would be okay to talk about Jesus and have Ten Commandments. Now even judges are being overthrown. And the powers of darkness have their judges in our country. In our Supreme Court. That are supporting abortion. That are supporting same-sex marriages. All of these things defile God. And that's their whole purpose, is to defile God. The trends that are going on in this world, you know, even in the Old Testament, I shared this before, how, the, how Satan sets the trends. When they used to do outward rebellion, they used to shave their heads and pierce themselves. That was an outward rebellion towards God. Look at what the trend is now. Thank God he doesn't judge by sight. Amen? <laughs> He says in verse 9, but watch out for yourselves for they will deliver you up to councils. In other words, you're going to be persecuted even at your jobs. People are going to mock you. It's happening already. People are losing their jobs. Teachers are being removed because they want to teach, um, they don't want to teach evolution or they want to at least show them another theory that you were created in God's image and likeness and they're losing their jobs. Can you imagine that? Look at the fornication that has been found in the church. Even in the Catholic Church. Right now. Where all the exposure has been. Why? Because God is exposing. He's coming home for a, a blameless bride. First of all, He's going to move through the body. He will not return. And I've said this before. He's going to return through the body. He's going to expose himself through the body of Christ by his spirit before he physically returns. That's why he's cleaning his church. And the Bible says that judgment will be in the house of God first. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. <laughs> and the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Man, we need to just... Get it out there. Get it done and go home. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, don't worry beforehand. Or don't try and figure out what you're supposed to speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. For it's not you who will speak, but the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now brother will betray brother to death. And father his children and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. It's happening. It's happening. You know, even in families right now, some of the children are being rescued and the parents are still having a hard time. People get Somebody gets filled with the Holy Ghost and they call them a cult. <laughs> what are you doing what are you involved in 
You know? What's this? It's because the carnal mind can understand the things of the Spirit. They so have been so bound by religion because the rule of the world is Satan and he blinds the people so that they can't receive the things of God. That's his purpose, isn't it? But I'm telling you, this new wine that you and I are going to begin to drink and already drinking little specks of it now, things are going to happen. There's going to be a mighty explosion of the Spirit. It's going to be like a like a huge light that's just going to go off through the body of Christ and spread right through like a nuclear weapon. And it's going to grab and catch as many people before the Lord returns. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Go to John chapter 2. <clears throat> You know, if you get an opportunity, check out and see what kind of disasters have happened this year. <laughs> More than ever. Greater than ever. And it's going to continue to increase. John chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. Oh, I love it. Would you read this with me? On the what day? Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> on the what day Saturday. isn't it great that even Jesus rose on the what day Saturday. and it says that you and I will be revived on the second day and we'll be what taken on the third day on the third day there was a what a wedding is that ironic or what hello aren't we going to go to a wedding <laughs> it's between you and Jesus on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of what? Wow. All that old, stinky, fermented wine of the law. <laughs> when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. And Jesus said to a woman, no, he didn't say mother, this is the first miracle Jesus manifested. He said, woman. Amen. Why? Because a whole new wine was about to come. <laughs> it was about a whole new arena where Jesus was about to do a whole brand new thing. And he said, woman. Not mommy. Woman. Ooh, did she get revelation. You know what she realized? I'm no longer his mother. He is my Lord. Amen. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Because he's no longer my son. He is my Lord. Now there was how many? Six water pots. And number six means man. There were six water pots of stone. According to the manner of purification of the Jews. Containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus said to them. Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to them, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when, he, his, when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now. Ooh, especially for those who would follow him afterwards. So we see that man was about to change. He was about to change. Amen? How was he going to change? By this new wine that was about to be poured out. That was the day of Pentecost when God began to pour out his spirit. 
But I'm telling you, even that era of time, things settled down, didn't it? The church was on fire. The wine was getting, I mean, you know, they were drunk. Things were happening. Manifestations were happening and tremendously. It wasn't about people going to church. They were having church in homes. They were going from home to home and breaking bread and telling the truth, declaring the gospel, witnessing and telling people's experiences with the Lord. And the Lord was still visiting. He wasn't just sitting home doing nothing. He was visiting His people. And then things began to settle down because during the dark ages. The word of God was taken away from the people. If you were found with the word of God, you were persecuted, burned at the stake. Because now Satan had gotten hold of the church. He infiltrated, set some of his high-ranking officials in there. And things began to change. And the Spirit of the Lord became quenched. If you prayed in tongues, you were burnt at the stake. If you spoke of prophecies, they burned you, they called you a witch. And that went on for a long period of time. A very long period of time. But God wasn't done yet. <laughs> he had a plan. And you're in it. Hallelujah. You know, it's an honor to be alive at this time. Amen. It's an honor to be called out of darkness right now. You, you and I could still be in darkness doing all the weird things that we used to do. But you and I were called right now specifically. But I'm going to share something with you. This new wine that God is pouring out. Depending where you are in position, it will assist you or it will hurt you. Depends on you. Depends on where you are. Because what he's trying to do is cause his children to get in. You know, when we used to go to bars, we used to have to go in. <laughs> the bar didn't come to you. <laughs> it's called Joel's place now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Would you turn to Acts chapter something? Two? Acts two. And they were all up in a room on this day. And in verse 4 it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And in verse 12, And so all, all around them they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever uh, could this be? Others mocking, saying they are full of new wine. Hallelujah. They were mocking, but they were speaking the truth. The thing is, they couldn't understand the things of the Spirit. They kept looking at the things of the natural. Man, these guys are making wine. They must have a gin mill around here. These guys are proclaiming to know Jesus. Look at them. They're drunk. Mocking and saying they're full of new wine. It's amazing how people don't even know God sometimes speak the truth and they don't even know they're speaking the truth. But Peter's standing up with... The eleven raised his voice and said to the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. How many, what days? The last days that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Now listen. Then it says, and I will show wonders in the heaven above. Man, we're seeing all kinds of things happening in the heavens. And signs in the earth beneath. Hello? Those are called earthquakes. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great day 
awesome day of the Lord and shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we know that this is already begun, but it's not fulfilled yet, is it? But we're in it. It's not like we're halfway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like we're three quarters of the way. <laughs> it's like we're there. It can happen any moment now. Any moment. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Go to Psalm 119, please. And it's quiet. Is everybody okay? Can we get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Psalm 119. Uh, verse 83, I believe. Whew, is it warm in here again? Yeah. Wow. Must be that new wine. Glory. Right. Some of them are hot, some are putting jackets on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 119 and verse 83. Drink and be merry, right? Oh, to God be the glory. Did I miss something? You know, I did. Okay. Hmm. Start at verse 81. My soul faints for your salvation but I hope in your word my eyes fail from searching your word saying when will you comfort me for I have become like a what a wineskin in smoke yet I do not forget your statutes how many are the days of your servant when will you execute judgment on those who persecute me the proud have dug pits for me which is not according to your law. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me! They almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precept. Revive me according to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. What did he say? I became a what? Wineskin. Mm. Go to Matthew 9. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9. And starting at verse 14. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the prophecies fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into an old wineskin. Or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into a new wineskins. And both are what? Preserved. Oh, let me tell you, this new wine is going to preserve you. Because you will not be able to maintain what's going to happen without drinking this new wine. It's very important. And we've talked about this before, about, you know, when people used to remove their sorrows and so forth, they'd go get drunk and whatever, although the sorrows really were not removed. <laughs> you know, they just got worse. 
spirit of oppression will come all upon them. But I'm telling you, this new wine that God is pouring out and trickling on us now, but it's going to pour out tremendously. It's, you're going to see things. You're not going to be affected by everything around you. You'll be able to see things in the spirit. You won't be caught up in woe is me and all these emotions, humanistic emotions. You'll be standing strong in the spirit of God Almighty. He's bringing his church to that right now. But first, he's exposing. Because the reason why he's exposing is so that penance will be granted. The blood will go before the Spirit. Amen? Because the blood always goes before the Spirit. Oh, to God be the glory. That's new wine that is divine. <laughs> the old legalistic ways and stuff like this. and People trying to play religion will not be able to hold this wine won't work. You know why? Because there won't be a new wineskin. Go to Psalm 104. Oh, to God be the glory. Psalm 104. Starting at verse 14. 14 and 15. Psalm 104, 14 and 15. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread which strengthens man's heart. Now, three things he talks about here. All of these are involved in something being crushed. <laughs> Hello? All of these are involved with something being crushed. Right, okay, wine is crushed with what? Grapes. Oil is with what? Olives. And bread is with what? Wheat or flour, right? Has everybody got it? All of these must be crushed. <laughs> it's called pruning oh praise be to God wine makes one glad so as you're going through all of these circumstances and whatever you're going to be at peace and enjoy no matter what's going on you will not be able to be moved by your circumstances no matter what because you're drinking of new wine but first you must be crushed. Uh-oh. <laughs> Love that crushing. It's called pruning. <laughs> the Bible tells us in Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Would you turn to Isaiah 55? You mean I'm not crushed enough? No. Yeah, when you stop complaining, then you're crushed enough. When you stop grumbling... You stop wanting to do what you want to do. Hallelujah. That's a loving crush. It's all like somebody giving you a bear hug. <laughs> You're all your spine going, <laughs> getting adjustment. Isaiah 55. <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Starting at verse 1 through 5, would you read it with me? Oh, oh everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and you have no money. Come buy and eat. Yes, come buy what? Wine, Wine and milk. Without money and without price. Do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Here in your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you. 
because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Let me share something with you. As this wine continues to be poured out, first of all, the wine is a representation of covenant also because it's the cup of wine, isn't it? If you're a covenant-keeping child of God, this wine is available to you. If you're a covenant-keeping child of God, the wine will be available to you. And we see here that He will glorify you because in this wine is blessings. The cup always carries it. It's called the cup of blessing. Amen? Go to Luke 22. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 22. In verse 14. Is everybody with me? When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to him, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. So here is this cup of wine that is also a representation in this new wine. It's a representation of covenant. This is with the promise of God. Let me share something with you. This is where he's going to begin to do exceedingly abundantly far above all you could ever ask or think. As long as you are a covenant-keeping child, and I'm not doing a preaching on covenant tonight, but we do have one. It is very, very important that you are covenant-keeping. Covenant-keeping means no fornication. Hello? Keeping oneself clean from the ways of the world. Covenant-keeping. I'll go to 1 Corinthians 11. Again. Is everybody there? Are you sure? <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28. Glory, let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, isn't that powerful? That's talking about communion, isn't it? A representation of covenant keeping. You know, we talk about this when we have communion on Sundays. Remind everyone if somebody takes it in an unworthy manner. He said, for this reason many are weak and sick among you and many sleep or die. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the what? World. With the world. Hmm. Be, be careful not to trample this new wine. It's also a representation of the grace of God. <clears throat> Go to Revelation 16. Revelation 16. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 16 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Oh, it's good to hear pages turning on a Tuesday night. <laughs> Revelation 16 and verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as a mighty and great earthquake, as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Hello. You know, things are happening. Now the great city was divided in three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every what? Island fled. Remember what just happened? Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail fell from heaven upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceedingly great. Fierceness of his wrath is in the cup of the wine. In other words, they will drink of the wine also. But it won't. Oh, it's going to affect them differently. Does everybody understand that? If you're in position... The wine's going to affect you differently compared to someone who's out of position. But everyone will drink of it. Everyone. Oh, hallelujah. So, let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. No, I'm not preaching doom and gloom. <laughs> I'm preaching truth. You heard it. Now you're accountable. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10. Well, I just don't believe that. I can, I can go do all kinds of stuff. Well, I accepted Jesus 20 years ago. And I'm still going to bars and drinking. And I'm still fornicating. And I'm still lusting. Well, you ain't going home. Hmm. Hello. No drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. No fornicator shall enter the kingdom of God. Anyone who practices such things will not enter the kingdom of God. He says, if you love me, you obey me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we are all partake of that one bread. Observe Israel after the flesh are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. What am I saying then? That an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything? Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to what? Demons. And not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Ooh. And he's, what's he saying? Come on out of that world. You cannot drink of the... You can't play both sides. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Won't make it. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. We need this new wine. We need this new wine to make it through. We need this new wine to make it through temptation, tribulation, accusation, persecution, and frustration. 
Hello? That's why God is getting ready to pull out. Listen, He supplies for whatever is needed then. If He sends you somewhere, He supplies what you need. If you're called to do something, He's going to supply what you need to fulfill what you're supposed to do. And He knows what's going on right now and what's about to happen. And He will supply what you need right then. And we're going to need this new wine and to be filled with this new wine that He's pouring out so we can make it through temptations, tribulations, accusations, persecutions, and frustrations. And one of the things you're going to be frustrated about in certain areas is what you're seeing and why people don't see what you see. Yeah. Why are they still doing this? Yeah. That's frustration. That's what the Lord says. Many are coming, learning, 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 and learning and never coming to the truth. It's frustration to watch somebody come to Bible study after Bible study. Worship service after worship service. And then go drink the cup of demons. It's frustrating. Amen? Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Would you read it with me? Praise be to God. Therefore, if anyone is in what? Right. If anyone's drinking that new wine. Hallelujah. He is a what? See, and that's how you maintain that new creation is by drinking new wine. All things have what? And behold, all things have become what? New. All things have become new. Everything. You know, the devil loves to put things on us. People accept it. They accept it. Okay. I'm labeled. <laughs> the Bible talks about there's going to in the in the end times that there's going to be a mark of the beast on the head and on the hand. Well, as a person thinks, so he is, right? See, one of the things the devil's going to try to do. Let me tell you, the mark of the beast is not. That's going to be manifested, and. In these last in these last days, but the mark of the beast is still here now. Because if he can cause you to think things to do them, the mark you're marked. Now the world might not see it, but God does, and so do the demons, so do the angels. They see the mark on us. That's why the Bible says that you and I are sealed. We are marked with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're marked. But we don't want to have the mark of the beast on it. So as a man thinketh, so he is or so he does. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So as you are a new creation in Christ, all things have passed away because the devil's always going to try and bring you to the arena of looking back and bringing the things from back to forward. You know what? <laughs> if something comes upon you, people just accept it. Okay. It's mine. I'll just take it. Oppression. It's mine. I claim it. Fear, I'll take it. Two of them. Lust. Oh, come on, Mr. Lust. I'll, it's mine. You know, no matter what it is, this is where we must learn separation. Sickness. Oh. You got any medication with that? I'll take it. It's mine. If the word says that you're a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. And God is pouring out his new wine. As you drink of this new wine, you're going to have such more revelation that I don't have to accept that. I will not accept that. I will not accept poverty. The Bible says that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. The Lord says he's not giving me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. He says, no plague, no disease shall come near my dwelling place as long as I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. 
that the angels will go before me because he's a consuming fire and I have the power and authority over all creation. Hmm. All creation? That's right. Because I'm co-creator with my dad. Why? Because I was thought of him and brought forth before creation was. So that was called before the world was even manifested. Does everybody understand that? He's gone before us already. It's already done. Now we're just walking it out. We must go through this time sequence for fulfill. But there's a third dimension where you and I can walk in with this wine where you're no longer bound by space or time. Fears and anxieties and stress. They'll fall at your side. It's not about what you can do. It's what he's already done. <laughs> Does everybody understand that what you're doing is you're claiming what he's done already. What you're, you're separating. You're taking what the devil's trying to label you. The world's trying to label you. Bipolar, no polar, and every polar. <laughs> I talk to people on the phone every day. They call me from Lakeside. They claim everything that that place has got to offer them. It's phenomenal. Well, how did you get their oppression? Well, what do you have now? This, 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 and this. They come out with a book of labels. We have to peel them off of them one at a time. Stick your hands up and drop that medication. <laughs> it's a Holy Ghost stick up. <laughs> stick those hands up and drop that medication. And come out in Jesus' name. Don't accept it. Don't claim it. Separate it. It's not yours. Lost is not yours. Hmm. Now you have the choice. But you have the power to choose. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit. He's talking about good fruit. Everybody bears fruit. Sometimes it's rotten. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Hallelujah, that's called squeeze. That it may bear more fruit. So God's trying to get us to a place where we're bearing more fruit. Why? So more wine can come. Hallelujah. Why? Where's the wine going to come through? His body. Remember, he's coming through his body first before he personally comes. Amen? What's the first miracle he did? He changed water into what? Wine. That miracle's still manifesting. <laughs> it's not ceased. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 11. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11 and verse 16. To what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions saying, We played the flute for you. You did not dance. We mourned to you. And you did not lament. 
For John came neither eating or drinking, and they say he's got a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. <laughs> Listen, Jesus wants me and you to be a wine bibber. Not of the natural wine, but of the holy wine. The divine wine. It's amazing how they mocked Jesus because he drank with them. He didn't get drunk. Hello? He didn't get drunk, but he hung out with them. Why? Because he was trying to rescue them. He was trying to rescue them. He went into the areas where everybody who supposedly carried the truth wouldn't go to. But he was bringing those who didn't know the truth new wine. He was bringing them something to drink of his presence. There was something when he got in their presence they couldn't comprehend. They only knew that there was a drawing and there was a fulfillment of his presence right where he was at. Something that See, when they were drinking, they didn't drink. So I can imagine though these guys, everybody around Jesus drinking, all of a sudden they lay their cups down. You know what? This cup ain't doing it. But whatever he says is, something's filling me and it ain't from this cup. That's the cup of demons. But I'm getting filled and something's happening in me from what he's saying in his presence. <laughs> That's a cup of new wine. <laughs> But they call him a wine bibber. So be a wine bibber of divine wine. New wine. Praise God. Isaiah 43. Oh, hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Isaiah 43 and verse 16. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse and the army and the power. They shall lie down together and they shall not rise. They are execute, ex extinguished they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things. Hello. Nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? A new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me and the jekylls and ostriches because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give what? Drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall what? Declare my praise. Oh, hallelujah. That new wine, this new wine that God is pouring out is going to declare His honor and His praise. Romans 6. Hallelujah. Remember, the wine is for us to maintain. The wine is for us to go through what's coming. God is increasing His point out of the Spirit. There's a new wine and a new thing happening. We'll either drink of the wine of wrath or the wine of blessing one or the other in Romans 6 starting at verse 1 would you read it with me what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound certainly not how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead 
by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life with the new wine. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. You know, this new wine is going to bring a lot of death to self. That's happening. Death to self. Self-desires. Me, myself, and I, the trinity of Satan. <laughs> Trinity of the flesh, me, myself, and I. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead. In other words, reckon yourself to be dead. To sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its loss. One of the things that the wine does is begin to expose. It's trying to make way in every area. You know, if you were to put, you ever have ice cubes in a glass and you begin to pour a drink in it, water or whatever, juice, you see that it's the water or the liquid is trying to make way into every area, but there's things in the way called ice. And it begins to be exposed. You can actually see the ice more. And it begins to melt because of the touching of the liquid. And that's what the new wine is doing. It's beginning to expose so it can melt or expose these things in our life that we can just be solidly filled with this new wine with no interferences. Nothing between you and God. So we need to walk in the newness of life with this new wine. In Romans 7, in verse 5, For when we are in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Where are you bearing fruit now? Are you bearing fruit? Good fruit? Rotten fruit? No fruit? That's rotten fruit. Are you bearing fruit to death or fruit to life? But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we should, what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So we see two things that he says. He said we're to walk in the newness and serve in the newness. Why? Because God is doing another new thing by the new wine that he's pouring out. And I want to close in Revelation 19. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 19. Everybody all right? You ready for this new wine? Praise God. In verse 11 through 16, would you read it with me? Revelation chapter 19. It says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judged and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. It's a time again of preparation. It's a time of walking in another dimension. 
God is bringing us to this place. Don't look back. Keep going. You can't change what's happened in your life and past, but you can change right now. Things can be brand new tonight. Things can be brand new. That's all you need to go to him is, is repent for touching unclean things, doing the things that you know are, are, are offending to him in every way. And let that new wine come. Oh, just lift your hands to heaven and just ask him to fill you with his new wine tonight. And anything that you need to do before him tonight, just do it. Do it. Lord, we repent for every area of our life. Lord, we desire and we thirst and hunger for this new wine. We know that we need you, Lord, and we know that we need to be filled with your spirit to be able to maintain. Lord, I'm asking tonight that you'll move the scales from the eyes and the hardening of any heart. I come against the spirit of ridicule and accusation, bitterness, stress and anxiety. I come against the spirit of woe is me and the lie of loneliness. I come against the unbelieving spirit and the deceptive spirit Come against every power of darkness that would hinder the people of God in this room. And Lord, I'm asking that you'll speak to your people in dreams. In dreams, Lord. Grant them revelation through your word and manifestation through your spirit. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Would you turn to the book of John, please? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. The book of John. <laughs> and chapter 2, please. Oh, hallelujah. The book of John in chapter 2. Starting at verse 1. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Obviously there was something that she knew. you got to remember something, that the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary more than once. And he put, told her things that were to come so that she would be prepared because the Bible says that certain things were hidden in her heart. And, 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 and so she, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Like, you know, what does Jesus have to do with them not running out of wine, right? Because there was something that she knew. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, woman. He didn't say mother. He said woman. What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Well, that was confirmation to Mary, his mother, because he did not recognize her as mother. He recognized her as woman, which separated him from her. When she heard that, she freaked in an arena to where she had gotten revelation there was something she was supposed to do. And the thing that she was supposed to do was look at verse 5. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says, do you do it? Because she knew now that something was about to begin. Obviously, some, somehow, somewhere along the line, she had known about when that time of woman and when, about the time of the wine. She was no longer his mother. She was his daughter. <laughs> In verse 6, Now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. So there are these water pots which were made of clay. Okay. And uh, in these water pots they would hold 20 or 30 gallons of water and there were six of them. Six meaning man because the representation of the number of six represents man. And they were filled with water. Now the Bible says that you must be born of water and what? Spirit. Hmm. And the wine usually represents spirit. Okay. <clears throat> In verse 7, And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. 
and they filled them up to the brim. In other words, they couldn't fit any more in it. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast, the one who was running the feast. And they took it to him. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made of wine, that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. You know who Jesus is? He's known as the bridegroom. And you and I, as the body of Christ, is known as the bride. But he was calling the bridegroom of the wedding. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Now, obviously, the bridegroom didn't know anything about this. He was probably like, what? You know? What do you mean, kept the good wine? Well, I didn't know we had any more, you know. But this was a part, this is one of Jesus' first miracles that he was performing. And it was very powerful here because it was a representation of a transition that was about to happen. It was about the things of old were about to pass away. And the things of new was about to happen. And I want to talk about new wineskins. New wineskins. Because without getting a new wineskin, you cannot receive new wine. Has everybody got it? You must receive a new wineskin. And then it is a process of receiving a wineskin. If you remember when we were maybe a little bit younger, and they had those little Boda bags or Buddha, what are they called? Flask or whatever, you used to put the wine in and go to the concerts and all the other yeah, stuff, you know, those little bags. And, well, that's what you consider a wine skin. Well, that's what they used to carry around all the time, except for most of theirs were a little bit bigger than those. That's how they kept things in. <clears throat> and when the wine skin would begin to dry out, if you put new wine in it, it would burst. It would always bust, so there would be a time when you'd have to replace that wine skin to get new wine in. And Jesus was revealing something of man in a transition because the six uh, water pots were a representation of man which was filled with water and there was about a transition to come. See, they looked at it as a miracle of Jesus changing water into wine. Jesus looked at it as a representation of the old being fulfilled to the brim and the new coming in. Does everybody understand? Because Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament, didn't he? That's why the water, spot, water pots were filled to the brim, because he was the one that was going to fulfill all things. Is everybody with me? Okay, go to, go to Jeremiah 18. And of course, the new wine represented the Holy Spirit, didn't it? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 18. <clears throat> now these water pots were made out of clay and stone and stuff. Some of them were carved out and some of them were molded. In Jeremiah 18 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Are you there? Yes. Hallelujah. The word was came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go to the potter's house, and there I'll cause you to hear my word. Sometimes we have to be caused to hear God's word. <laughs> you know, we get into circumstances and troubles and all kinds, because God is trying to draw us because He has been calling us. We've been saying, Okay, God, I'm ready. We've never fulfilled it. Finally, there's a position or a place where he's calling us. Sometimes, hey, let me share something with you. Some of us had to go to jail. Some of us had to be in the hospital. Some of us had to be on the street. Some of us had to find a place where we couldn't eat or drink and get into a place where they were feeding and you had to sit there and hear the word of God before they'd feed you. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Why? Because he was causing us to hear his word. It was for our benefit. So he was causing us to hear his word. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. The wheel represents the Holy Spirit. And the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. What was he doing? That's considered a wineskin. He was making a new one, wasn't he? 
Amen? The vessel that was holding the wine or the pot that was holding the water, right? He was remolding, wasn't he? In other words, there's got to be a time when you've got to be willing to shed your skin. <laughs> Amen? And, and there's a process of that where you're going to be shedding certain things and God's going to be asking you to let go. You know, He doesn't ask you to let go of everything all at once. It's a lot easier if we volunteer it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you it all right now. That's it. Instead of, you know. But then there's things that we end up picking up and we get dried up and we have to replace certain things. And what He does is He says, okay, I'm going to mold you according to the way I want to mold you and not according to the way you want to mold you. You know, so many people think that just because they have a talent, that's it. That's what God's going to do. No. You don't know what God is going to do. But you've got to allow Him to do it. Because there's always preparation. God is always preparing me and you for a so something specific. And each job or each event, there's always preparation. You know, sometimes you may go out at your job and the Holy Spirit may teach something that Tuesday or Friday night. And the next thing you know, man, you know, I just got that and, and now I know what it's for. You know, and sometimes we just don't realize it. <clears throat> so the clay or the vessel was regenerated into another vessel. We're always going through a regeneration process. We call it a healing process, which we call repent, renounce, and receive. But there is a process of everything. God is always promoting us if you're willing to do whatever it takes. Sometimes He demotes us if we refuse His way. Amen. Sometimes we have to go out and eat more dirt till we finally get it. Does He want us to? No. How many times have people said, Lord, not my will, but Your will? Then He, he puts us in a place... So that we can learn the way and we say, ah, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> this can't be God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see that the, the potter, who is God, takes the pot and begins to regenerate me and you into another vessel. And this process is a continuous process. And you've got to allow Him to do it. Turn to Titus 3. Oh, hallelujah. It gets real quiet when we start talking about regeneration. And stuff. Okay, what's God getting ready to do with me now? <laughs> Titus chapter 3. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, listen. It's a, it's, a, it's a healing process. It's a killing process, you know. It works hand in hand. It's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> Titus chapter 3 <laughs> is everybody there in verse 3 would you read it with me come on for we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy Hateful and hating one another. That sounds like worldly way. <laughs> but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by His grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In other words, you have a choice. You have a choice of submitting to the regeneration or resisting it. Everyone has a choice. You know, I always share with people, you know, the, the ones that say, Lord, not my will, your will, and then they refuse. It's like somebody lassoing them, tying them to a horse, and they get dragged along the bushes, the stones, and everything else. Because you know what? They're going to have to go through hell on earth until they finally surrender. Because they're always saying, Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, do this for me. Oh, Lord, I want to do your will. And they keep refusing to really do the will of God, and they go through a lot of stuff. Yeah. Amen? 
we all went through a lot of stuff. Because we'd say, oh God, not my way, your way. And then we'd choose to do our way again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so the regeneration is done by the Holy Spirit. He is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a force. That's why it's so important for us to look at Him as a comforter, as a teacher, as a friend, as God and guiding us to all truth. That's why we encourage everyone when they first get here, one of the first things you want to do is invite the Holy Spirit. Welcome Him to help you read, to help you learn, to help you study, to help you understand. Amen? Invite Him always. He will never leave you. But you can quench Him. You can hurt His feelings. Amen? Depending on what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your thoughts, what's your attitude like, He'll move away. One of the things David cried out was, was said, Father, take not Thy Holy Spirit from me. He did not want God's presence to leave Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Would you go to Luke chapter 5? Oh, new wineskins. <laughs> you know, when a snake sheds its skin, it, it's, a, it's just a certain time, isn't it? I don't, I, I'm not sure whether it's a specific time every time, but there's a certain time or whatever that all of a sudden, whether it's a change of atmosphere or, or temperature or weather or whatever, or there's just a certain time when a snake sheds its skin. And you know, it just happens automatically. He just doesn't choose that day to shed his skin. <laughs> you know, it's a process. And certain parts begin to change and this and that and whatever. And, and finally that whole skin is replaced with a brand new skin. And you know what? In our process of this, it's not when you choose, it's when God chooses. And that's where we've got to be willing to yield to his shedding of our old wineskin so that there's something new he wants to give us. If we're still holding on to things of old, that new wine doesn't come and we get dried up. Oh, hallelujah. Where did I say to go? Luke 5? Luke chapter 5. Thank you for new wineskins, Lord. In verse uh, 33, would you read it with me? Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, those of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. Now that was something, isn't it? How come John's disciples you know, are fasting all the time, but the ones that are following you aren't doing this right now. They're having a good time. <laughs> and we're miserable fasting and praying. <laughs> but these guys are having a great time. And he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? Amen. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and then they will fast in those days because Jesus is the bridegroom. Then he spoke a parable to them and said, No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise the new makes a tear and the also, the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts a new wine into old wineskins. Or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must, 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 must be put into new wineskins. And both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new for he says the old is better. So sometimes we're not willing to get rid of the old. But God wants to bring us up to a higher place. There are many people who are bound by traditions of religion and stuff. You know, three things that prevent people from getting baptized in the Holy Spirit or continuing on to get new wine is traditions of men, unbelief, and unconfessed sin. There's some people who are just not willing to be honest before God. Not that they can't be honest before man. Amen. Just being totally honest before God. 
These are certain things that you and I must go through the process. Listen, God is not interested in what you believe. He's interested that you have the truth. Because only truth sets you free. What you believe will put you in bondage if it's not truth. Amen? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> so only with a new wineskin can you have new wine. Amen? Just turn to Psalm 119. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 119. Is everybody there? Verse 83 or 81. 81 to 83. Read this with me, please. Psalm 119, verses 81 through 83. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching your word, saying, When will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in smoke, Yet I do not forget your statutes. Now listen, there's something that was happening with David. He became dry. He said, I become a wineskin in smoke. <laughs> he became dry. What was he saying? Man, I'm searching your word. I Help! I need your presence. I'm looking for you. My eyes are looking for you. I need a drink. Amen. A lot of people go to the bar and ask for a drink. We go to Joel's place. Amen. Hello? Where he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon you and you will prophesy and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right? That's new wine. <laughs> so David had a dry skin. He needed to exchange that skin for a new one. And he was crying out for that exchange. Sometimes you're groaning in your spirit to cry out for a change. And you can't even figure it out. You don't know what's what. But you just know that something's changing and something's got to change because you're not content where you're at. You know what? You're shedding. You're going through it. God is trying to put a new wineskin on you. It says that we groan. Listen, we're not growing to be unclothed. We're groaning to be more clothed with His glory. That's where this groaning is from. Sometimes it feels like it's just groaning inside and you know what you can get in a place where you're just like miserable sometimes because you know that you need to have more of God. Amen. Man, I need to have more of you, Lord. What's the hold up? Sometimes he says it's you. <laughs> and sometimes he says, wait. Patiently. Trust me. Amen. <laughs> Trust me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. Oh, parabakia, saposo. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. Oh, that's when you start singing, I want more, more of you. Hallelujah. You know, you get to a point where nothing satisfies. Nothing. Because God is trying to bring you up to another level. What you used to do before is no longer satisfying anymore. A new wineskin is coming on. That old one's being shed. Man, this song I used to worship to all the time just isn't fulfilling me anymore. What I used to do with it, it's just not fulfilling me anymore. I need more. That's okay. He won't deny it. He's just bringing us through a change and transition of regeneration of the Holy Spirit to put a new wineskin on so that you can get more wine. He's trying to bring us up to another level. And sometimes during this process, He begins to expose you to you. <laughs> I guess all the time, not sometime. Yeah. And, and, and why? Because there's certain areas that we haven't let Him 
in yet. You know, we thought we let him in, but we didn't. There's certain areas he wants to heal that you're still holding on to that you think you can heal. Because you're not being open with him all the way. There's certain things that have happened in our lives that we're either ashamed of or guilty of that we don't even want to express to God like he doesn't know already. See, he's just asking us to come before him and in wholeness and of trust. See, he wants us to totally trust him in every area. Every area. So that he can stretch his hand and send forth his spirit in that place of healing. He doesn't want to patch the wineskin. He wants to give you a new one. He's not a patcher. He's a creator. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2 is just for you, glory. In verse 20, would you read it with me? But in a great house, are you in a great house? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God's house is a great house, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. Ooh. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and arrogant disputes knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him, to do His will. So we must cleanse ourselves. Now if you read this fully through and understand it, he's talking about vessels that need to be cleansed by putting on new wineskins. It's coming from... Now let me explain this first of all. This transition is coming from what we call a goat to a sheep to a soldier. Okay? A goat represents rebellion you know, a sheep is one who follows, and a soldier is one who becomes a warrior. Okay, so it's the transition from goat to sheep to warrior. Has everybody got it? Or a soldier, what we call a soldier. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so a sheep. Skin, I mean, a, a goat skin, a sheep skin, right? And a new wine skin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you all get that? A goat skin? Because what do they used to use? They used to make the wine skins out of goats or sheeps, right? So you and I had a goat skin. Then we had a sheep skin. And God is trying to put on a new wine skin so that you can become soldiers and warriors for Christ. Hallelujah. Go, to, go back a little bit to verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 3 and 4, would you read it with me? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one said it was going to be easy. <laughs> Does everybody see that? No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So, he's talking about cleansing ourselves from the past. Be careful of the entanglements that return to a gulp or that will cause you to return to a gulp. <laughs> we must keep changing. We must allow the Lord to keep changing our skin. Amen? 
so that these wineskins that will be producing will be filled with new wine. Did you ever go to a, uh, a pond, or let me, let me use a pool, that hasn't been functioning in a while? <laughs> it gets pretty stagnant and stinky, doesn't it? That's what can happen to us. Sometimes we need that oil change with a new oil filter. Amen? A new wineskin. We need that change so that we can continue to go forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you got to be careful not get involved in entanglements of life. In other words, you get worried about, oh, where am I going to eat? How am I going to get this? And what about this? And what about that? Worry is a to entanglements in the affairs of the world, affairs of your life. You said that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, and you've given Him your life. Why take it back? <laughs> Come on, you're under warranty. <laughs> Amen? You're under warranty. Why, why take it back now? Why break the warranty? You know, if you use something incorrect, the warranty is broken. You know, <laughs> don't break the warranty, right? <laughs> Let God be God and us be His children. Oh, hallelujah. But the devil would like to entangle us back up again. Go to Galatians chapter 5. He, the devil wants to delay that wineskin exchange. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Chapter 5 and verse 19. Would you read it with me? Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow, that's getting involved in the entanglements and the affairs of life again. Now, it's very important that we understand these. These entanglements will prevent the kingdom of God manifesting in us and through us. And continued practice of such things will prevent us from entering eternal life. Amen? Amen. So, remember, the powers of darkness are trying to entangle us into these, event, these affairs of life again. This is where you're more important than anything else. In other words, me, 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 and me. I, 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 and I. I, yeah, 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 right? I call that a demonic pizza. Amen? Praise God. Go to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. In verse 5. Matthew 16 and verse 5. Oh, hallelujah. 5 through 12. Matthew 16, 5 through 12. Read it with me. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now the word leaven means evil. Okay, it means evil. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees are supposed to be the ones that were 
the teachers and the rabbis, and they were supposed to be the men of God that were dressed up and all this other stuff, and supposed to be leading people in the right direction. And the Lord said to them, be careful of the evil that's in them, or those who are associating with evil. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we had taken no bread. Now they, now the disciples went way off into another arena, thinking, uh-oh, we forgot bread. He's upset now. <laughs> Jesus, oh man, what are we going to do? Maybe we can send out for bread somewhere, you know? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Oh, you little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have not brought no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? In other words, the miracles, they, they, they got caught back up on, oh, we forgot the bread. But they forgot who was with them. The bread maker. <laughs> the, the bread of life. Hello? <laughs> and verse 10. Now, nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up. How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In other words, what they were teaching. He said, be careful of what you're listening to. Be careful of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Be careful of the religious leaders. Amen? In other words, they were old wineskins. <laughs> Not willing to change their skins to put new wine in. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus was the new wine. He was busting their bubble or wineskin. I mean, come on. He called havoc. He caused a lot of havoc with these guys, man. I mean, they didn't know what to do with Jesus. The only thing they could think of was to kill him. Because they, he wasn't about to go with their flow. Remember, his first miracle is a representation of fulfillment of the old to bring in the new. Some of them weren't willing to follow along with it. They still wanted the old way, the worldly way. <clears throat> so he was busting their boat. They couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't let go of their traditions and their beliefs. They weren't willing to follow, even though Jesus, I mean, those who really knew the scriptures of the old began to realize that Jesus was the Christ. Not all of them were boneheads, you know. Some of them began to follow. In fact, Nicodemus, he snuck to Jesus at night because he knew if they saw him in the day, he would have gotten in trouble, man. And he even called Jesus rabbi, which represented teacher. Which, in other words, he believed who Jesus was. But that's powerful because even though he believed who Jesus was, Jesus turned around and said to him, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. <laughs> he said, you need to be born again. That's great, Nicodemus, that you believe in me, but there's something more. There's something more. It's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need more. <laughs> I was talking to a gentleman today on the phone who's been a believer, but he's been everywhere in programs for... 10 or 12 years, 12-step in it, 2-step in it, 3-step in it, whatever, you know. But he forgot one step. <laughs> you know, so many people just jump over that step, you know, and continue getting in trouble. <laughs> I said, man, you got no power. And he says, what do you mean? He says, you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I said, you got no power, man. He said, well, uh, I was baptized when I was a kid. I said, no, 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 no. Not a, not a little sprinkle of water or submersion. I said, baptism of the Holy Ghost, where God baptizes you in His Spirit. Amen. He didn't know what I was talking about. But that's okay. No power. Who wants to manage addiction and sickness? I want to be free from it. <laughs> Sometimes we get involved in that. Yeah. We begin to manage again. And that's a trickery of the devil. You've been free of something, and next thing you know, you're managing it again. And you start picking this thing up and cuddling it, feeding it, and next thing you know, it's eating you. Starting to manage it all over again. 
Next thing you know, you're out of position. And you're wondering why you're not moving forward. You're wondering why the blessings have slowed down. You're wondering why all kinds of things are happening. You know why? Because we've started in our own strength. Management means your strength. <laughs> Freedom is His strength. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. We could go on all night about that. John chapter 5. In verse 39. John chapter 5 and verse 39. <coughs> You know, Jesus didn't put up with the Pharisees or Sadducees. He rebuked them, called them hypocrites. I mean, you know, he didn't take no garbage. People think that Jesus was a walkover sometimes. He wasn't. The only thing he did was lay down his head to die for me and you. Other than that, he stood up strong. He, a third of his ministry was casting out devils. When they saw him, they shook. Sickness couldn't handle his presence. <laughs> sin was convicted in his presence because sin is nothing but a presence of evil <laughs> oh John 5 39 would you read it with me he's, now he's speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees and he says what you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life now this is powerful you think you have eternal life which is in the scriptures and these they and these are they which testify of me. He's telling them, look it. The, search, the scriptures that you're searching are testifying of me, he said. You think you have eternal life. Then he says, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have it. In other words, you're not willing to lay it all down and come to me as a personal relationship. Amen. Not willing to change from legalism to relationship or from religion a relationship. God desires a relationship. It's not how much you know, it's who you know. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so he rebuked him saying, listen man, you search the scriptures that testify of me. Think you have eternal life, but you won't come to me to get it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You know, there's a lot of people out there who can read the Bible and quote scriptures left and right Amen. and are still going to hell. I always tell people, you better know the taxi cab driver when the taxi comes and picks you up. In other words, at the end, remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. <laughs> Either the demons will come and take you, or the angels of the Lord will come and take you. One or the other. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Not willing to change, or not willing to allow the wineskin to be changed. Amen? Yeah, we have a fight going on. And some of our fight or resistance is resisting the Holy Spirit, what He's trying to do with us. And when we resist Him, we turn around and receive the demonic spirit. Amen? Does everybody get it? Amen. You're going to communicate with one spirit or another. Hallelujah. Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Oh Lord, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Give me that new wineskin. Oh, not that way. No, no, not that. That hurts too much. No way. No. No. Let me keep on those old filthy garments. It, it feels better. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Would you read it with me? Paul speaking, he says, Brethren, is everybody there? Mm -hmm. Brethren, I do not count myself... Oh, that's 13, isn't it? Let's go back one, all right? Am I there yet? All right, I'm getting there. In verse 12, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. Everybody say, I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Remember, he said he chose you. You didn't choose him. We lose that sometimes. You know, we think, oh, I chose God this day. No, he chose you. Amen. <laughs> you just finally 
accepted. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Say that again. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Hey, Paul had a lot to forget. Remember, he was a Pharisee. He was one of them. Thought he knew it all. Killing for God. Searching the Scriptures that testified of Jesus but wouldn't come to Him. Killed everyone who followed Him. He was known as Saul before he came to Paul. But when he got a new wineskin and he got new wine, he said, forget the old wine. Forget the old ways. I don't want to know nothing with it. I'm willing to forget it. Not that I've apprehended perfection, but I'm going to continue to press on and let God deal with me in exchanging the wineskin and giving me new wine whenever I'm needed. Ooh. And verse 14. I press forward toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature, which is a part of maturing, letting go, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. So wherever you've obtained, hold on to it and don't lose it. Don't let that be taken away. Amen? But continue to press on, forgetting those things. Like I said, God's not interested in what you believe. He's interested that you know the truth. There's many things that we believed were incorrect. Amen? Mm -hmm. Truth frees you. Truth frees you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Luke 18. Glory to God. Luke 18. And verse 29 and 30. Everybody there? Would you read it with me? So he said to them, I surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time. Wow, that's powerful. In this present time. Right now. See, if you can't do that, you can't get a new wineskin. Because then you're still holding on to the old. And, okay, he says what now? Who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Ooh. Ooh. That's powerful. Putting the kingdom before your life is the number one important thing. Putting the kingdom before your life. In other words, the kingdom is priority before you. That's where you got to get out of the way. And we've talked about this before. In other words, whatever you're doing, are you doing it to expand the kingdom of God and bring glory to His name? The kingdom must always come before your life. Amen. Matthew 6. <coughs> May get you in trouble sometimes. <laughs> there will be resistance. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Matthew chapter 6. Verse 31. Would you read it with me? Matthew 6, 31 through 30 something. Is everybody there? Read it with me. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or what job am I going to get? Or when am I going to get my license? Or when am I going to get my car? Or when am I going to get my cell phone? Or when's God going to send me a woman or a man? Or when or what or how? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 32, <laughs> For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Oh, isn't that wonderful? He knows. You don't have to beg. He knows. You don't have to write a letter to Him. He already knows. <laughs> you don't even have to fast over it. He already knows. Oh, Lord. He knows. Isn't that wonderful? You just got to get in position. Verse 33, would you all read it with me? But seek first the kingdom of God. Say it again. Seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, the kingdom must be first. And His righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Didn't say to come all at once either. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You be accountable and responsible for what God has given on your table now. Now, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. You know, worry is sin. That means you're associating with a spirit of fear. And that is sin. I don't want to associate with demonic powers. Amen? They may be your friend for a while. Then they'll possess you if they can. And the next thing you know, you're a wreck. Oh. But believers can't have demons. Really? Then you need deliverance. <laughs> if you don't believe a believer has a demon, you've got one. <laughs> He's called a lion, deceiving, seducing spirit. <laughs> He's the blinder. Hello? Listen, if there's bondage in your life, that's association with a demonic spirit, isn't it? Come on. Remember I shared with you, Jesus' third of his ministry was casting out devils. The Bible says in Mark 16, 16, let's go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wouldn't want to be called a liar. Mark 16, 16. Praise God. Mark 16, 16. Oh, get ready for that new wine skin. Hallelujah. You know, once it's preached, it's teached, then it's imparted, and now it's going to begin to happen. For some of us, we've been going through it already. Hallelujah. I feel like I shed three skins already this week. But to God be the glory. Death is a wonderful place. <laughs> You know, this must all started when Wade put in there a cult. Remember he put it on the cult of sack. <laughs> Here we are located on a cult of sack. Praise God, we love you, Wade, no problem. Thank you. you, you it's okay. Hallelujah. Uh, in verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. What's the word believe mean? Follow. If you're not a follower, you're a liar. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will what? Oh, hallelujah. They will what? Cast out demons and speak with new tongues. So it means if you follow, you're eventually going to start doing these things. See, there's always a manifestation of God's presence in your life. 
if there's no manifestation, His presence isn't there. There's always a manifestation of His presence in your life with power, with witness, casting out devils, the gifts of the Spirit. There's something always there. Amen? Ooh. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in Acts 1a it says, And when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you shall have power and be witnesses. Well, I just don't believe that. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Praise be to God. Oh, yes. Can you feel the peeling now? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shed that wine skin. <laughs> Putting the kingdom before your life. Hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Please read it with me. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. That's the difference between management and freedom. We are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Whew. That the fruits may be manifested of Him and not of our own. Not our power, but His power. Let me share something with you. And not blinded with pride and self-promotion, but yielding to the presence of the Holy Spirit for regeneration. Let me say that again. It's not in our power, but in His. Not in our strength. But not blinded with pride and self-promotion, but putting or yielding to the person of the Holy Spirit for regeneration. That's what we're doing. We're yielding to the Holy Spirit for regeneration. Not in our own strength. Not trying to manage, but being free. Not blinded with pride and self-promotion, but yielding to the, Holy, the person of the Holy Spirit for regeneration. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Oh, praise God. It's good to hear the pages turning on Tuesday night. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 3. Is everybody there? Zechariah chapter 3. Change is good. Remember, your circumstances are an opportunity for you to change. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through. Good. It's a good opportunity for you to change. <laughs> but you don't know how I feel. Praise God. Change. <laughs> In verse 1, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Let me tell you something. There will always be opposition. Always. Always. Did you ever think, man, nothing ever goes right? <laughs> How come there's always a delay? Because there's always opposition. Things are not going to always go the way you want. 
and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Old wineskin. Guy was about to promote him. Had to change his wineskin. Then he answered and he spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let him, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by, and the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua. In other words, he was promoted. And he, and the, and he said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If, hello, choice again, if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. In other words, goat, sheep, soldier. Goat, sheep, soldier. Amen. Joshua just got the wine skin changed and brought up to become a soldier. He just told him, listen, it. when I'm giving you this position, you're a soldier. If you keep it and you do things right, I'll give you more. Mm -hmm. For if you're faithful with a little, you get more. But if you're not faithful with a little, you don't get any more. In fact, if you're not faithful with a little, you'll end up losing what you have. Amen. 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 That's why discipline is important, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, hallelujah. Not our power, but His, right? <laughs> Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So there will be opposition, won't there? So one of the first things we must do is put the kingdom before our life, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. One of the other things we must do is recognize that there's going to be resistance. Second yes. Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 3. 3 and 4. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Hello, there's a war going on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Wow. Something else we got to do. We must have the will to war. If you're not do not have the will to war, those who are not in battle will become casualties. You can't sit on the bandstands and watch. The devil is no respecter. A lot of people think, well, man, if I don't bother with this, the devil won't bother me. No, he already has you. Remember, the Bible tells us that we are not fighting flesh and blood. But we are finding powers of darkness, principalities, wickedness in heavenly places, right? right? Rulers of this age. We are fighting darkness. And you've got to be willing to war. In fact, God is going to test you to see if you have the will to war before He'll promote you. Because He knows that you're going to end up losing everything anyways and bring shame to His name if you're not if you do not have the will to fight or the will to war. Amen? Amen? That's a necessity. So we talked about the number one thing is, is that the kingdom must be before our life. Right? The other thing is, is that we must have a will to war. Very important. Go to Hebrews 13. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Halleluj
Yeah. Hebrews 13, 15. Is everybody there? Praise God. Would you read 15 through 17 with me? Therefore, by him, let us continue, say continually, continually. offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifice God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they will watch out for your souls and those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Now listen, there not only must be a, war, a will to war, there must be a will to praise and obey. That means will is a representation of choice. There must be a will to war. First of all, we talked about there must be a will for the kingdom to be before your life, a will to war, a will to praise, and a will to obey. And finally, in Matthew 16, Hallelujah. You know what this does? This maintains your wineskin until you get a new one. It prevents you from leaking. <laughs> Matthew 16, 24. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's read it together. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. There must be a will to die. die. Mm. Put on a new wineskin and go higher in God. That's the only way you go. No wines, new wineskin, no new wine. You'll become stagnant. And let me tell you something. The devil knows when you're stagnant. He knows. He'll dry you up. And then eat you up. Amen? Amen? Remember, the kingdom of God before your life, a will to war, a will to praise, a will to obey, and a will to die, no matter what the cost. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Lord, we want new wineskins. Put us new wineskins, Lord, that we can have new wine. Shed us, rip us, kill us, and position us that we can have new wine and be a witness for you that the rivers of living water would flow through us, that the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit would be manifest through us, that Christ would be manifested in us and through us, that your kingdom would be manifested, and that the fullness of Christ would be manifested, that you would bring glory, Lord, to your name. In Jesus' name.